Begin lying on your back. Today's practice is a yin yoga practice, an intro to yin yoga, if you will. Because we will be staying in each pose for about a minute. Because we'll be staying in the poses longer, you don't have to worry about forcing yourself into the pose when you first get there. You can allow your body to naturally unroll into the pose. And since this week's theme is reclaiming your narrative, I'll read some stories while we're in each pose. So for now, just take a few deep breaths in. You'll need a block and a shrek. Breathe into the back of your body. Slowly release the muscles in your face. And when you're ready, bend your knees and bring your feet onto the mat. And we'll come into thread the needle. So bring your right ankle onto your left thigh. You can reach your hands through and hug the back of your thigh in slightly. Keep your shoulders grounded into the mat. You can lift your head off the mat, but since we'll be here for a little longer, you can just lay there and just hug your thigh into your chest. And make sure to flex your right foot. So the first story is about an old man who lived in the village. He was one of the most unfortunate people in the world. The whole village was tired of him. He was always gloomy. He constantly complained and was always in a bad mood. The longer he lived, the more vile he was becoming. People avoided him. He created the feeling of unhappiness in others. And when you're ready, you can switch to the other side. Make sure to flex your left foot. But one day when he turned 80 years old, an incredible thing happened. Instantly, everyone started hearing the rumor. The old man is happy today. He doesn't complain about anything. He smiles. The whole village gathered together and asked the man, what happened to you? Nothing special, he replied. 80 years I've been chasing happiness and it was useless. And then I decided to live without happiness and just enjoy life. That's why I'm happy now. Often in our lives, we're chasing this feeling of joy instead of just being present in the moment experiencing what we're feeling right then and there. You can release your foot, roll over to your side. And come on to all fours with your knees below your hips and your hands beneath your shoulders. Reach up and then stretch your arm under your left arm. Stretch your right arm under your left arm Bring your shoulder to the mat and your ear to the mat. And while you're here, breathe into your shoulder. Breathe into the back of your body. You can keep your hand rested on the mat, left hand rested in front of you, or you can wrap it around and hold onto your thigh. So this next story is about a wise man. People have been coming to the wise man complaining about the same problems every time. One day he told them a joke and everyone roared in laughter. After a couple of minutes, he told them the same joke and only a few of them smiled. When he told them the same joke for the third time, no one laughed anymore. Come up from your stretch and switch to the other side. So reach your left arm up and then thread it through 
under your right arm, bringing your left shoulder and your left ear to the mat. When he told the same joke for the third time, no one laughed anymore. The wise man smiled and said, you can't laugh at the same joke over and over, so why are you always crying about the same problem? For this story, it makes light of experiences that we hold on to, but it's a reminder that things that have happened in the past have already happened, and we get to make the choice to free ourselves from them, to get support and love and healing, and to commit to doing the work. When you're ready, you can push up out of the stretch. This time, extend both hands in front of you. Keep your hips above your knees and let your heart sink towards the mat. You can place blocks under your forehead here. Lift your head up slightly. Or if you're comfortable, if your forehead touches the mat, you can allow your forehead to touch the mat. Make sure you press your hands into the mat and press the floor away from you. The next story is a story of two friends who are walking through the desert. During some point of the journey, they had an argument and one friend slapped the other one in the face. The one who got slapped was hurt but without saying anything, wrote in the sand. Today, my best friend slapped me in the face. They kept on walking until they found an oasis. When you're ready, you can press out of Puppy Dog. Sink your hips back till you sit down and then swing your legs around in front of you. You're going to extend your left leg out and bend your right knee. Bring your left arm, hug, hug it around your right knee and twist towards your right shoulder. While I'm in a twist, I like to look down instead of forcing my neck to look over my shoulder. Because a lot of times we lead a twist with our chin so we turn our head all the way without turning our spine. So make sure you're rotating in your spine. Ground your right hip forward because the right hip may want to twist backwards. Try to bring your right hip back forward so it's aligned with the left. So the friends found them an oasis where they decided to take a bath. The one who had been slapped got stuck in the mire and started drowning, but the friend saved him. After he recovered from the near drowning, he wrote on a stone. Slowly come out of your twist and switch to the other side, hugging your right arm around your left knee, twisting to the left, and twist you can also sit on a block place your hand on the block. He wrote on the stone, today my best friend saved my life. The friend who had slapped and saved his best friend asked him, after I hurt you, you wrote in the sand and now you write on a stone. Why? The other friend replied, when someone hurts us, we should write it down in sand where winds of forgiveness can erase it away. But when someone does something good for us, we must engrave it in stone where no wind can ever erase it. Take a deep breath in and on your next exhale, slowly come out of the twist, swing your legs around, Coming onto your hands and knees and extend your right leg forward into pigeon pose with your left leg extended back. Now 
here in Pigeon, you can have two blocks under your head. You can stay up on your forearms, put two blocks under your head. You can put one block. You can play around with the levels of the block to see what feels most comfortable for you. Or you can extend your arms forward and allow your forehead to rest on the neck. Now this story talks about forgiveness. This is a very interesting story for trauma because our brains are built to hold on to negative memories and negative stimuli more than positive. It's the way that we protect ourselves and are able to evolve but it also makes it difficult um, when we're healing. When you're ready, you can press up out of pigeon. You can swing your left leg around to the front and extend the right leg back. So you want to notice if you are on the front of your thigh. Make sure your leg isn't rolling out to the side to protect the knee. Try to fan out all five toes onto the mat, that back leg, to keep your foot straight. Once again, you can rest on blocks or lie your forehead on the mat. But when we are trying to heal, Sometimes it's difficult for us to see the positivity that is present in our life. Sometimes we become used to only seeing the negativity and putting emphasis on the negativity. You experience something and then you need to go vent about it to your friends so then you relive it. So we have to be intentional about highlighting positivity and gratitude in our lives to remind our brain about these positive things and to drown out the negative. When you're ready, press up. We're coming to Janu Shirshasana, so you wanna bend your left leg and extend your right leg out. And you can stretch over to the right side. You can either stay with your left arm up, reaching over or maybe more comfortable to rotate to the right, rotate your torso to the right and allow your knee, your forehead to come down towards your knee. You can keep your hands on either side of the of your leg or you can hold on to your foot. You can also sit on a block here in Shir Shasana. Breathe into the left side of your body. Breathe into your upper back. It's a great side stretch. You may not be the most comfortable. <laughs> you ready? Switch to the other side. So extend your left leg out, bend your right leg in. And once again, you can just reach over, let it be an open side stretch, or you can rotate your torso towards the left thigh. Keeping your hands on the floor or holding your foot. Breathe into your side body. Breathe into your upper bed. So, 
next story. Before we start the next story, you can press up and extend both legs out. And we'll stretch forward. While we're folding forward, try to keep both feet flexed. Again here, you can rest your forehead on block. Play around with the heights to see which ones work best for you. For me, two blocks is more than enough of a stretch. It is, is an intense stretch. So you can do two blocks, one block, no blocks. Maybe it's not intense for you. Once upon a time, a daughter complained to her father that her life was miserable and that she didn't know how she was going to make it. Her father, a chef, took her to the kitchen. He filled three pots with water and placed each on a high fire. Once the three pots began to boil, he placed potatoes in one pot, eggs in the second pot, and ground coffee beans in the third pot. When you're ready, you can push yourself back up from the stretch. Bring your legs together, you can turn back to the side, stay on the mat, and we'll come forward into the stretch. But here you can sit on a block or a bolster as well. Before you fold forward, take a deep inhale to lengthen your spine and exhale to fold forward. Remember, we're going to be here a little bit longer than in a normal practice, so you don't have to force yourself down. Just allow yourself to slowly melt down. So he let the three pots boil without saying a word to his daughter. After 20 minutes, he turned off the burners. He took the potatoes out of the pot, placed them in a bowl, pulled the eggs out and placed them in a bowl. He then ladled the coffee out and placed it in a cup. Turning to her, he asked, daughter, what do you see? Potatoes, eggs, and coffee, she hastily replied. Look closer, he said, and touch the potatoes. When you're ready, push yourself up. Bend your knees and slowly roll down with your hands under your thighs. And here you can take a strap. Um, you can use the strap of a robe as well. And you're going to hook the strap around your right foot and extend your right leg up. You're going to extend your left leg out. Flex both feet. And you'll have your block on the left side near your hip. And slowly allow your right leg to fall to the left or twist. So the goal is to have the block support your leg. If, you're, if your leg goes all the way to the floor, you don't need a block. But for most people, you need a block or two to hold your foot there. You can have it right under your ankle. And extend the right arm out. She touched the potato and noted that they were soft. He then asked her to take an egg and break it. After pulling off the shell, she observed the hard boiled egg. Finally, he asked her to sip the coffee. Its rich aroma brought a smile to her face. Father, what does this mean? She asked. He then explained that the potatoes, the eggs, and coffee beans had each faced the same adversity. When you're ready, bring your leg back up and switch to the other side. Bring your block to the other side outside of your mat. However, each one reacted differently. The potato went in strong, hard, and unrelenting. But in boiling water, it became soft and weak. The egg was fragile, with the thin outer shell protecting its liquid interior until it was put in the boiling water. Then the inside of the egg became hard, However, the ground coffee beans were unique. After they were exposed to the boiling water, they changed the water and created something new. 
which one are you? He asked. When adversity knocks on your door, how do you respond? Are you a potato, an egg, or a coffee bean? In life, we all experience different things, and we all are given the choice of how we will react. In this practice, you are choosing yourself. You're choosing healing. And you deserve to sing yourself some gratitude for the things you've been through and the things you're going to do in the future. When you're ready, lift your leg back up and take off the strap. We'll come back into Shavasana. You can stay here if you need more time in Shavasana. When you're ready, you can roll over to your side. And slowly push yourself up. Come to a comfortable seated position. Roll your shoulders back. Bring your hands to heart. May we be at peace. May our hearts stay open to the internal love that's always available to us. May we forgive ourselves and others for our humanity. May we be healed and may we be a source of healing. Namaste.